Good morning, fall is officially here. It is a crisp 44 degrees. I can see my breath. And while fall is typically a time when gardening is winding down, everything is being put to rest, a lot has been happening in my backyard homestead. Now, a few months ago, I gave an update on the garden, how everything was going. And in that video, I had an aerial shot of what my garden looked like. My garden is roughly 40 by 40 feet. Well, it has grown a lot. Because of all the storm damage we had, we had some people come out to give us quotes on dealing with the trees. One of them had a forestry mulcher, so I thought it was an excellent opportunity to hire them to help clear out the back of our property that was overgrown with a whole bunch of junky scrub trees. And I knew it was going to maybe quadruple the size of the garden area, but I did not know how much room it would actually add. So you can see just how much space has been added to our backyard. Right now I have a cover crop planted right here because this area is going to be my main new growing area next year where I'm going to be doing row crops. Uh, this is another about, uh, I think it's a little bit smaller. So this is about 40 by 30 growing area right here. And I still have a lot of clearing that I'm going to be doing this fall and winter, going into spring maybe even. I'm like clearing some more trees. I tried cutting down a black walnut right here and I was hoping that it would fall this way. I kind of knew that the odds were against me because there was some storm damage on this tree where a lot of the weight was then pulling it back that way. I still tried and I failed. <laughs> Luckily there was nothing for this tree to hit, uh, but this is going to be a fun mess for, for me to clean up. In this back area where there are a few trees left standing, uh, I had them left because they're large enough where I can use the trunks uh, for, for building things, maybe even just firewood. But this whole area back here, I don't know just yet what I want to use it for. There are plans for a greenhouse. Um, there are more growing areas. I know that I cut down a, a lot of trees, but I'm actually going to be replanting a lot of trees back in this area, especially at the very back of the property where it's against this tree line. I'm going to be planting some native fruit trees that do okay in shade or flourish in shade. I do eventually want chickens and ducks and I thought that I would have them this year, that I would build a chicken coop and have everything ready. However, gonna probably hold off on chickens next year just because of some travel that we have planned, but eventually there are gonna be some animals back in this area. Now growing in the garden, I have a lot of fall crops and growing up, I never really gardened in the fall. Uh, it's not something we, we typically did, not much of. Maybe we would throw out some turnip seeds and, and have that. But I've got a lot of rhubarb, or it's rhubarb chard, not rhubarb. A few different types of kale. This is a mustard green. I have a lot of lettuce growing interspersed with some basil that is about done for the season. I'll, I will harvest some and then maybe see if it's gonna be warm enough. I'm, I'm hoping that we won't have our first frost until November. Looking at the Farmer's Almanac, it tends to be around uh, Halloween, November 1st. So here, here's to hoping. And when frost finally does come, I've got these, I'm gonna make more, maybe a little bit bigger. I think these were five feet sections that I cut to make these little hoops because I have some plastic that I can put over top of uh, the beds. I won't do all the beds. There'll just be a few. I tried to plant <laughs> somewhat logically and have things that I, I thought would overwinter better uh, and have them all organized that way. So I may have hoops on two or three of the beds and see how that goes for season extension and just how long into winter I can be harvesting fresh greens. 
But before I get ahead of myself, I have some of my summer crops, like these tomatoes, that I need to go ahead and just pull anything that's remaining off. I can still eat the, the green tomatoes, fried green tomatoes. I can store them in such a way where they will still ripen. Uh, so I'm gonna be pulling all of the tomatoes off, cutting the tomatoes down. And I guess that's it for the tomatoes for the year. But looking forward to next year, one thing that I'm not gonna do is use these clips that I use. I don't know if it's because I got the like, cheap knockoff ones on Amazon, but this plastic definitely isn't UV rated or treated. So being out in the sun made them nice and brittle and they easily broke. And now there's little plastic shards everywhere in my raised beds that I need to pick out, which is an absolute pain. So uh, lesson learned, not gonna use these, at least not this brand, maybe I'll fork over money for the more expensive ones, or I'll just use, you know, jute twine that's biodegradable and not that much harder to use. So probably probably gonna do that. Down here are some of my peppers. These are the, this is the, the spicy section. Uh, back here I have some scotch bonnets. These are dotzel peppers right here. And then right down here I have the Carolina Reaper. Uh, some of them are already right here. Uh, so until recently, uh, this was the hottest pepper uh, in the world. Uh, it was recently dethroned by Pepper X, uh, but this right here, hottest pepper in the world. I've grown, I've got a few of them that are ready. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with them, uh, but if for whatever sadistic reason you want to see me eat one of these peppers, uh, comment a pepper uh, in the comment section down below, and uh, if I get enough peppers, I'll do it. One thing that I'm really interested in trying this winter is overwintering my peppers. To overwinter peppers, first you start by harvesting all of the remaining peppers that are on the plant, and then you give it a, a very, very aggressive haircut, taking it down just a few stems, removing all of the foliage, and then dig it up. You're gonna remove the vast majority of the soil and the roots. Some people go even as far as to removing all of the soil and then giving it a dunk in an insecticidal soap uh, to make sure that you're not gonna be bringing any bugs into your house. I'm gonna clear a lot of it off. I'm not gonna do the dunk. I'm not that worried. If I end up having a whole bunch of bugs in my house, um, I'll let you know and <laughs> change it for the next year. And then I'm gonna be storing these in my office that just has some ambient light. From what I've read, some people say that they store it in a basement with absolutely no light and they do perfectly fine and come back. I don't have a basement, I have a crawl space and it's an area that I don't actively go in a lot unless I'm changing out the furnace filter. So I want them to be in a spot where I can at least see them a little bit more because they will potentially start to put on leaves uh, which you should just pluck off and make sure that they're just force them to go dormant but excited to see what these guys look like next spring and hopefully i will have peppers even sooner than i normally would now that i've chopped down the summer tomatoes and got the peppers all potted up i have a lot of extra greenery here to be composted so i'm gonna take that over to my new compost bin Now I put this compost bin system together using pallets. Pretty quickly put together. It's gonna be something that it's not gonna, you know, last forever. So I didn't wanna put a whole lot of time in over engineering it. But I do think it is gonna last a few years. Right now I have two bays in it. I have more pallets where I can make a third bay. So I'll have compost that's, you know, being added to one that is kind of cooking, uh, you know, finishing up, and then one that is ready to go into the garden, ideally. And now that I've got the new compost set up, I can take down this one that I put together last year. Mainly it's been holding kitchen scraps, but I do think that there are some sweet potatoes. Actually, I know that there are some sweet potatoes growing in there, in there and we also had tomatoes uh, that were growing out of there this season. So 
this compost pile has actually been uh, rather productive. I'm interested to see if there's actually like formed sweet potatoes or if it was just the vines growing. Another uh, green tomato. Looks like a garlic clove too. I don't know how that got in there. I'll say that this compost isn't the best because uh, I really didn't manage it well. Never really turned it. Never really monitored the ratio of browns to greens. And definitely didn't water it to make sure that it was moist enough. Just digging through it uh, pretty dry in the center. We have had a very dry past few months. But overall, I, I wasn't expecting much from this. But I'll take all of this, add it into the new compost pile, and give it a good water, and treat it with a little bit more respect that uh, a compost pile deserves. Still clearing away things, cleared away the last of the zucchini, I've got a whole bunch of sweet potato vines from the sweet potatoes that I harvested that I need to collect and chop up and put those in my new compost bin. But I think that that's gonna have to wait till tomorrow, as well as planting onions, more radishes, arugula, and spinach, because I gotta go to a Taylor Swift thing. When you're down and you stare out your window Hoping that you'll come up with some words to say